This video is brought to you by Micro Center. Stay tuned to see how you can get a free SSD. It's a wonderful day to modern Xbox and a wonderful outfit as well. If you know me, you know I love the original Xbox and just recently I fixed this Xbox on this channel. You may remember it as the Jesus box. I never called it that, but I'm gonna call it that now. But while I've always loved the original Xbox, there is something about it that I've always not loved and that is how noisy it is. Check this out. It's just a bit of a noisy boy. It's louder than pretty much any other console of its generation, except for maybe the Dreamcast's disk drive. Now there are two noise making components in the Xbox. The first is obviously the hard drive. It's got a full size, three and a half inch, 20 year old ID hard drive in there. And despite Steve Jobs' best efforts to make his late nineties computers quiet, there was no getting around having one of these. Obviously they weren't this bad when they were new, but the point is we can do a lot better today. The second is the fan at the back, which functions as a case fan, CPU fan, and even kind of a GPU fan, and as such contributes just as much noise if not more than the hard drive, depending on what brand and model hard drive your Xbox got. And if you happen to have an early 1.0 model Xbox, you also got a dedicated GPU fan, which makes it even noisier. I'm not kidding, listen to how this sounds. But yeah, it's loud. And I got to thinking, well, there must be a way to, let's say, tone down the noise. I'm gonna try in this video to make this Xbox as quiet as possible. Should be fairly straightforward since we just need to replace two components, but before we can get started on any of that, we do need to mod this thing. Firstly, just because it's a good idea. I mean, if your Xbox isn't modded, are you even enjoying your life? But secondly, because your Xbox pretty much has to be modded for you to be able to replace the hard drive. This is because Xbox hard drives are password protected, you know, to prevent users from modding it. As such, it'll also suspect foul play if the hard drive isn't locked or is locked with the wrong password. And to make it even more complicated, each Xbox has a unique randomly generated password, so there's no way to know what it is beforehand. While you can build a device to pull the password from the Xbox motherboard, the easiest way really is modding. Either hard modding with a mod chip or TSOP flash to remove the check altogether, or soft modding which lets you retrieve the password so you can lock your replacement drive in a way the Xbox will be happy with. I won't get too much into modding here because it's not really the point of this video, but if you're interested in a modded OG Xbox, I highly recommend checking out the website consolemods.org. It collects all the Xbox modding information scattered throughout hacking forums over the last 20 years into one convenient wiki. I used it for this video and can confirm it's a great resource for anything you want to do with your Xbox. Xbox. I decided to use the game save exploit soft mod, which essentially means loading up an exploitable game, crashing it with a corrupted save file, taking control of execution, and installing a soft mod to the hard drive. All pretty simple, as long as you can get it to load a game. Yeah, I forgot this Xbox's DVD drive was dead, or at least seemed to be. And not just the drive tray belt, I mean, that would be an easy fix, but even once I got the disc in, it still didn't want to read it. Do I jump ship to the hot swap method, or do I use a drive from another Xbox? I might use another drive. Well, working in retro tech is never boring. Retro tech is like a box of chocolates. You never know what's gonna fall apart next. So off I went pulling a known working drive from another Xbox and temporarily transplanting it into this one. Why have they put this here? Why have they put this damn scrotum on it? Sitting a little awkwardly, but otherwise that should work. Look at that. And then we never need a DVD drive again. Thankfully, Xbox DVD drives weren't password protected and paired to each individual motherboard at least not yet. Apart from the DVD drive transplant, the exploit went very smoothly and soon we had a soft modded Xbox and crucially a copy of the EEPROM containing the unique hard drive password. No dramas, no whack and borries. Okay, and our Xbox is fully modded. So step number one is going to be replacing this hard drive. And to do that, I will need a few bits and pieces. And to get these parts, I went to Micro Center who were kind enough to sponsor this video. We all know that electronic stores are becoming a rare breed in the face of online delivery, but I think that's a real shame because if I can pick something up locally on the same day, I almost always prefer to. There's nothing worse than working on a project, discovering you need a part, and then having to put the project on hold for days while you wait for that part to be delivered. 
Micro Center's shelves are packed with everything electronics and computer related you'd ever need. Even just walking around and looking at parts got me dreaming of my next computer build, and I'm not even planning to build anytime soon. And even if you're not into custom PCs, Micro Center has a huge selection of pre-built computers too. So if you're on the lookout for a new computer, new components, new accessories, or anything like that, I highly recommend checking out Micro Center online or locally if you have one nearby. They're even offering a free 240GB SSD to new customers. Check out the link in the description for more details. And now back to the Xbox. Okay, so first off, what hard drive am I gonna put in here? Well, I've decided I'm gonna go all out, put in a Samsung 120 gig SSD. Now, you're probably thinking two things. One, an SSD, it's too fast, it's, a, it's overkill. The Xbox drive bus isn't fast enough to take advantage of the speed of an SSD. And you're right, but keep in mind the goal of this project is as quiet as possible. And no matter what size, no matter how new a mechanical hard drive is, it will always be louder than an SSD. You also might be thinking, 120 gig, that seems a little bit small, but honestly, I'm not the kind of person who just loads my Xbox with like 100 games. I'm pretty happy with just five to 10 of my favorites. So honestly, 120 is fine and it will be absolutely silent. But of course, SSDs like this have SATA connections, not the old IDE of the Xbox. So, needed to pick up a SATA to IDE bridge board. Hey guys, welcome to my unboxing video. <laughs> and we're done. That's essentially it. Now, another thing I got was this two and a half inch to three and a half inch mounting kit adapter thing. This is a three and a half inch mechanical drive, but SSD is uh, almost always a two and a half inch drive, which means it won't automatically just kind of fit in there. We could just tape it down, but I thought it would be neater to get a proper adapter. <laughs> I'm now noticing it might not actually work because this is mounted in the middle and this moves it off to the side. I guess we'll find out. Let's do a test fit, shall we? <laughs> right. Well, it looks like tape it is. <laughs> If I was willing to spend a little bit more, I could have gotten this adapter, which is considerably smaller and quite likely would have let me use the mounting kit, but it's fine. So at this point, I made a minor mistake. I tried to use an Xbox homebrew tool called Chimp, don't ask, I didn't name it, which is supposed to allow you to easily upgrade an Xbox hard drive without needing a PC. However, I couldn't get the Xbox to pick up the new drive at all. It turns out I missed the step where if you're using a SATA adapter, you're meant to replace the Xbox's 40 wire IDE cable for an 80 wire one. Apparently this has something to do with the 80 wire cable having less interference and cross torque and therefore being better able to handle the faster speeds that come with SATA drives. So while I waited to get one of those, I decided to focus on the second noise making Xbox component. Okay, so we're focusing primarily on this at the back here, the fan. Let me remind you all of what this sounds like now. Noisy. So what I got to replace it was this Nexus something 70 millimeter fan. It brands itself as a real silent case fan and the world's quietest fans. This is pretty frequently recommended as something that is more or less a drop-in replacement. So let's give it a shot, shall we? It's actually slightly smaller than the original fan. This is awkwardly, I believe, a 72 millimeter fan, which I think is a non-standard size. This is a 70 millimeter fan, so it's slightly smaller, but two millimeters, tiny. Not that I have familiarity with anything that's only two millimeters, but anyway. Now, the original fan is held in just with two little pegs on the side. Oh, <laughs> let's, let's unplug this before I accidentally electrocute myself. They are actually quite sturdy, so I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Again, being quite careful. Okay, and it is out, and oh boy. Well, clearly my dusting job in the last episode wasn't very thorough. I'll just wipe that down real quick. Hey guys, welcome to my unboxing video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so I'm, I'm here that this should basically just drop in. And it pretty much does. Cool. God, this is such a mess. And it came like this. The cable is obviously a lot longer because it's designed for real computers. As you can see, the cable on the original Xbox was extremely, extremely short. Okay, here we go. Powering it on. Actually, I have to plug it in first. Okay, now, powering it on. Whoa, I can barely hear that at all. It is spinning, it is working. I can feel it, but yeah, that's way quieter. That is so cool.
it's not even close to the loudness of the other one. Just a reminder of what it sounded like before. That's amazing. Okay, real quick, if we're gonna make this a permanent installation, I do wanna untangle these wires. Just gonna straighten them out, and I'm gonna put a cable tie on them. Okay, nice and neat. The extra cable mass does make it a little bit tougher to put the DVD drive in. You kind of have to shove it into its corner, but it can be done. There we go. I was warned about this. It is slightly looser than the original fan was in the case. I don't think it's that much of a problem because the hard drive caddy is kind of keeping it in the same place and as long as it's not rattling a ton, I think it's probably not too bad. So all we need to finish it off now is that 80 wire IDE cable. And we're back and it is a great day because I finally have my 80 pin IDE cable. So why don't we go ahead and we'll try to install it. When working with Xboxes, you tend to do this very often. Removing hard drives, removing DVD drives. Okay. Now the original Xbox IDE cable is actually very close to the kind of cable you'd find in a PC, where you have three connectors, two of which are close together. Traditionally, the long stretch would go to the motherboard and the two close together would connect to up to two devices. The Xbox uses it backwards, with the long stretch going to the hard drive, which is perfectly permissible with IDE. The only way it won't work is the middle one going to the motherboard, which for some reason I do remember being a problem once for me back in the day. But the cable is slightly different in that all the connectors are upside down. You see these pegs for helping with alignment, they're usually on the other side. That means a regular cable does end up having to do some extra loops and folds that make it far less neat than the original cable. But thankfully the new one is longer so we can get away with it. I guess I could split up a bunch of the wires so they can be twisted around easier, that was a common trick, but whatever. All I can say is it does make me appreciate how far we've come not having to deal with so many wide bulky parallel cables anymore. Looks a mess, but hopefully it tastes great. And I'm turning it on now. Whoa. I didn't even know I'd turned it on for a second there. That was so quiet. Oh, please work. <laughs> please work. Hmm. Whoa. Okay, we got a Microsoft logo. Whoa. Okay, look at that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Love that. It's interesting that it took a while to start. I almost want to try that again just to see if it was like a fluke or not. Turning on a second time. I'll never get over how quiet that is. I'm just, it's just astounding. Very serene, very zen. Hell, maybe the Xbox wouldn't have failed in Japan if it was this quiet. Huh. It seems like it might just take that long to start up now. And the irony is, <laughs> this is an SSD. I guess I gotta load a game onto it, right? It doesn't seem to be much slower, at least from the FTP speed. I'm getting about 11 megabytes a second, which seems at least the same, if not a little faster than usual. So it doesn't seem to be slower overall, just on startup, I think. It's not ideal, but I don't really mind waiting another five to 10 seconds to start up. I mean, I have RGH and Xbox 360 before, so <laughs> clearly I don't. Nice, okay, we're done, okay. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> there we go, the most important game in the world. Yes, oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. It's running off an SSD and it's quiet. You can hear me whisper over the Xbox. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and clean this up. So because of how wide the adapter is and the way the plastic kind of narrows around the screw holes, I had to mount it a little diagonally. But the tape seems to be doing a good job. It didn't budge putting some mild pressure on it, so I think it should be secure for any bumps or shakes the Xbox is likely to experience. I just have to stuff this IDE cable in without ruining it. Okay, let's see if it'll close up. All right. Okay, look at that. Let's plug it all back in and admire the sound once more. 
Now there is one other thing that we should look at. I mentioned it before that this replacement fan is slightly smaller than the original. So we should look at whether the temperatures are going out of control. So the Xbox fan's default speed is about 20%, or alternatively, it can go up to five times faster. In fact, let's try that out. Set up all the way, let's try 5X. Okay, that is louder. Still only about as loud as the original fan was at 20%. Now I've heard people recommend that with this fan you should double the speed to ensure it provides adequate cooling since it's a little smaller. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that's pretty quiet, especially because it's very unlikely that you'd be playing Xbox with the console sitting right in front of you. Usually, you know, it's going to be a couple meters away and next to your TV, right? But for the sake of science, I'm going to do some testing myself. I'm going to compare with a very similar, also 1.6 Xbox, which still has its original fan. First, I left each Xbox at its dashboard for about an hour to get a good idea of each one's idle temperature. The stock fan maintained a pretty stable 55 degrees Celsius, while the new fan slowly crept up and eventually got as high as 68 degrees Celsius, and quite possibly would have kept creeping up forever until either the CPU throttled down or the system just shut itself off. So I think I can safely agree with those recommendations that the new fan at the same speed is just not sufficiently cooling the CPU. I set it to 2x and almost immediately it started cooling back down, seeming to stabilize around 61 degrees Celsius. This is still warmer than the stock fan, but still a fairly acceptable temperature to idle at. Let's play some games. Oh, you may have to play video games? What a hard job. After about 20 minutes of Burnout 3, the Xbox with the stock fan rose only 2 degrees to 57 degrees Celsius. And I'm happy to say at 2x, the new fan performed very similarly, only seeming to rise 1 degree to 62 degrees Celsius. Again, warmer than the stock fan, but not dangerously so. So I think we can safely say running at 2x is indeed your best bet with this fan. It'll be a little bit warmer, but a lot quieter and doesn't seem to be in any danger of overheating. Just for fun, I turned the fan all the way up to 5x and played another 20 minutes of Burnout 3. This almost certainly defeats the purpose of this mod at all, because the result is almost as noisy as a stock fan anyway, but I was curious to see what would happen. After 20 minutes of gameplay with the fan at full blast, the temperature dropped dramatically to 53 degrees Celsius, even lower than the stock fan at idle. So I guess you could use this as a way to lower temps without necessarily increasing the noise much, at least until we get into liquid cooling, which of course people have done. Me, I think I'm happy with sticking around 2x, since that seems to be a good compromise between low noise and stable temperatures. Anyways, I couldn't be happy with this, I think this is the coolest thing in the world. As someone who loves the original Xbox, who still plays the original Xbox, the handful of games that were never ported to any other platform, and who also loves quiet electronics, who loves peace and tranquility, being able to play those games without hearing that whirring wind tunnel anymore, to me, that's just a game changer. I think that's just the coolest thing. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I don't know if you found this as cool as I did, but I hope you at least enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.